Okay, good morning everyone. Let us start the session of today. A warm welcome to our masters, Pauline Damati, and brothers and sisters around the globe. Um, welcome to the uh, Saturday Hualien Dhamma Talk. Let us start the session for today. Okay, today I would like to share a short accepted uh, speech from Master Ching Yen. Great disturbs the mind leading to the loss of one's true nature. As the saying goes, human nature is good. Everyone possesses pure and kind thoughts inherently. With the passing time, with the passing of time and the changes of the eras, people develop great in the pursuit of life, disturbing their minds and leading to the loss of their pure nature, namely damaging the earth and polluting the water. Pray sincerely daily for good connections to be able to meet with many bodhisattva in the human world. With gratitude to all in front of me who act as bodhisattva with no selfish desires to contribute to mankind unwaveringly. Ga'an to Master's teaching. Now let us send our sincere prayers into the ten directions. May the Saha land be free from disaster and peace prevail in the world. Let us sing the prayer songs with sincere piousness. in the world. Now let us pray together for universal love and blessing. With loving respect, gratitude and confidence, let us wish every person in our life a healthy body and enlightened mind and a total fulfillment in universal love. Now let us expand this consciousness to include every person in the world, every being in the universe. 
Let our inner bright love make this wonderful world even better. Let us all immerse ourselves in the joyful embrace of universal love. Before we hear the wonderful sharing, let us invite our boatmasters to lead us in paying homage to the Triple Gems. Let us pray our respects for these teachings and explanations to the Buddha and Master Ching Yen by making three sincere vows. Please rise, palms together. First bow. Second bow. And bow to our beloved Abu Master and Master Ching. To our Abu Master to try us today. Okay, today we have three sharers. Brother Joe will be sharing on Dharma discussion and we have Brother Victor Wayne and Sister Janet uh, will be sharing on the modern flying Bodhisattva. And uh, lastly, we have Brother Sean Tan. Uh, he will review the topic later. Okay, uh, let us uh, invite Sister Suchin for weekly summary. Ganan, Sister Suchin, over to you. Thank you so much, Sister Lee. Um, okay. Last week we had um, Brother Go Jia, Jia Lun uh, from Penang. <laughs> Always good to hear someone from Penang. <clears throat> okay, and he spoke about living the Tzuzi lifestyle. In the heart of Brother Jia Lun, Tzuji seeds were sown, a journey from age seven where his spirit has grown. Diving into the essence of management law, he found its core in the why, how, and what Tzuji is for. Tzuji's path, he realized, was a blend profound. In Tingsu aphorism, the why and how wisdoms are found. The what lies in the workings of missions and footprints that Tzuji lays bare, echoing the Buddha's Dharma where truth and meanings share. Buddhism's depth through Tingsu aphorism, he would die, simple yet profound, making daily rituals thrive. A lifestyle aligned with values, actions, and Dharma's call, choosing vegetarianism a compassionate choice for all. Through one action, though one action seems small, Collectively, it's vast, saving lives, aiding the environment, and improving health and mass. From a Tzuti family, gratitude fills his heart. Now sharing values, helping others is his way of playing his part. An aphorism cherished, become amidst life's tests. In busyness and trials, maintain a tranquil chest. With room to grow, guided by Tinsu aphorism's light, Brother Chia Lun's journey reflects Tzuti's very glowing, bright sight. Okay, well, then we had a sharing which was very uh, inspirational for me. Um, the lessons learned in KKB. Brother Wei Liang spoke. KKB, which lies 60 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur, holds a beacon named Taman Sina Harapan, a garden of shining hope in Malaysia since 1983 has it been opened. First viewed as hell on earth for those with minds and bodies twisted and worn. It's a sanctuary for souls often forgotten, their dignity somewhat reborn. Volunteers with tender hands learn the care that love lends. Trimming hair, bathing bodies, changing lives with gentle hands. Brother Wei Liang, touched by his first encounter within these walls, recalls the days, the day to teach compassion answered this place calls. Since 1995, alongside the teachings of the Buddha so wise, he who attends on the sick, on me his service lies. Catholics too, in November last year, led by Archbishop Julian's plea, joined in joy in service bound, a community of mercy. Human life is a precious gift, rare and not to shun. Cherishing our health is a tribute to our, ourselves and our parents. In helping others, we find the truest way to repay the love and nourishment our parents gave to us each and every day. Then um, that he was also joined by Sister Eileen. Sister Eileen faced her trials, a passage of rights she deemed too high, with resistance and fears of not being strong enough to even try. Assigned to a children's ward, her anxieties began to fade. 
in serving, joy blossomed and her apprehensions were allayed. She learned in giving, more was received, a paradox of the heart. Raised to mass emotions, yet something within her broke apart. When illness struck her father, her experience at KKB shone through. Grateful to Brother William for pushing her to views anew. Inviting others became easier. To Tutti's foe they came. Compassion, boundless, knows no race, fueled by wisdom's flame. Buddhism teach compassion, seeks to free others from their pain. Active beyond empathy in service, we our humanity claim. In her deep wells of compassion were found, a treasure deep inside. Proving service is our rent for life, in love and kindness we abide. And we had uh, Sister, sorry, this is Sister Wai Fong, Sister Monica and Brother Christopher, uh, who shared their, uh, a piece on their sending love to Kathmandu. Since... The earthquake's tremors in 2015, Tutti's presence in Nepal stood, has stood. In Kathmandu, the ancient capital, amidst challenges, they understood. The Tima Brigade, with skills so diverse, to charities call they flew. Facing overpopulation and water scarcity, their commitment never regrew. Generaries cold in Kathmandu set the stage for their mission start. Setting up planning flows with hearts ready to impart. Orphans from PSS shelter home, their first stop to register and serve. Local hospital staff left their hands, bridging gaps at, at the important ingredient, and that is love. Volunteers from lands afar, Malaysia and Singapore, address health concerns with respect and love at the core. Eye screening, mental health, tests of blood and urine too, medication supplements they provided, a comprehensive care view. Sharing to this vision they served and through actions they spoke, inspiring, inspiring local hearts to join a cycle of goodwill they invoke. We had Brother Christopher who also shared, venturing out of Kathmandu to a haven found in 2005, a sanctuary for 75 souls where hope and care thrive. The dreams is inspiring and committed. Revealed the history under pandemic's shadow, a challenge he admitted. Medical supplies were scarce, yet hope was not lost. They set all together five stations. Brother Nani, a local Nepali commissioner, entertained, translated, and was a compassionate addition. Special children with needs profound, in gentle hands they find. Dr. Nidesh, Tima Seed in Nepal, with love and care entwined. Food and clothes to often sent, Dr. Verna's heart was content. Meeting faces old and new, inspiring volunteers with good intent. The essence of good, not measured by scale, but heartful deeds so fine. Tinsel of horizons, wisdom guiding, in giving time and self, life will show many positive signs. Within this home, a community stands, supporting each other with might. A testament to the power of service, turning darkness into light. Okay, Ganan for listening. I shall stop share right now. Uh, hand over to our Brother Ching to introduce our next speaker. Thank you so much for listening. Ganan. So much, uh, good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another day. I've got a full program uh, today. And uh, Brother Joe, we begin with, uh, with Brother Joe. Um, and uh, welcome back. Uh, this one, this platform, Brother Joe, uh, I'm going to share with us his wisdom uh, on uh, these, um, the teaching by Master. You know what was the question, Brother, before you start? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether you received the question about praying uh, at your board. So that, I think it would be great. Uh, it came from all the discussions, so it would be great to hear some insights from you on that. All yours. Okay. Greetings, everybody. Good morning. And um, very, very happy welcome to all of you to come and join this discussion. Um, today, I'm going to share. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Chin. And thank you, everybody. Today, I'm going to share. Uh, well, I mean, these are the things that we talked about in the past weeks, um, the recent chapters from chapter 10, 11, 12, 13. And then 14, 15, 16, uh, we're about to 
we're sort sort of at the end um, of chapter fifteen, and today, this morning, uh, Master's Dharma talk uh, from I think it was the fifteen hundred oh three episode. Um, uh, you can even hear Master um, getting quite emotional towards the end, where Master told us that this is the time where um, the the Buddha must try very hard so that people will not be distra- will not be detracted from the path, um, even though that they have questions, even though that they are not they have doubts. But it's even more important to lay the foundations for the answer so that disciples and followers from the future, in the future, will be able to get their answers right away. So it, it was, it was, you could tell that master's voice gets a little bit emotional and, and, and that, that, that she was um, saddened um, that this was happening, that people were not sort of understanding the true teachings and that the teacher, the Buddha himself needed to uh, reiterate the importance. And so Today we're going to be talking through a different um, through a different idea, and eventually we'll get into uh, what Brother Chin talked about the question that were raised in discussion. Um, I think there were probably, I mean, all these stories and all the all the Dharma talks, uh, we're sort of educated or we're sort of told that we should be very diligent that we should participate in these Dharma discussion, that we should participate to these Dharma lectures and talks. And while each talk could vary in length, it could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way maybe to two hours. And there have been such long Dharma talks or master speeches that it's very difficult to stay focused. It's very difficult to stay focused for two straight hours or 90 minutes straight. And um, it's understandable. And so sometimes we are doing this because we are told to do this. And we sit through it. And at the end, we ask ourselves, so what did we get out of this? And the question is, so how much did you, did you remember? What was the most impress, impression, impressed on your mind after you hear all this Dharma talk? And if you, ask these, if you ask these questions, it's actually sometimes very disheartening that the answer could be, I don't quite remember what I heard. Or, there, you know, yeah, there, there's, there are very touching moments, but I'm not quite sure what I got out of it. It's like reading a book where for the book study or well, for the book uh, study group that we have a certain progress we need to make for each week. And while trying to make that progress or trying to meet the pages they were assigned, you did read through them. But the question is, what did you get out of this? And this is a very common, common issue in that when we're trying to organize or, or prepare an after, after reading report, a, a particular reading report after we read a specific section, you know, we, we sort of can't try to find what was the main point of, this, of these passages. And that sometimes is very disheartening. Like you spend all the time reading, you rush through or you sit through the 50 minutes Dharma talk and you were sort of following, it's not like you were falling asleep, but afterwards, what did you really get? So, so that, I think that's, that's the very first thing that I want to talk about, that Dharma discussion or Dharma talks or Dharma lectures, all these, why? And I think it's very important to know that, to know that there are all these treasures all these Dharma talks, Dharma lectures, Dharma discussions, it's almost like it's a cave of 
treasure. It's a treasure cove where there's a lot of things inside. You go in, you don't have a bag, you only have your two hands. So what are you going to pick out of all these things that were presented to you? And the longer that you stay in this cave of treasures, the longer you get to see all the different treasures that's inside. But it doesn't really matter how big the cave is. And it doesn't really matter how many, how much treasure is inside. Because all you've got is your two hands. So it could mean that you go in and all the treasure and all the gold and all the pearls and all these things were stacked up, you know, three, four, five stories high. And it won't matter because all you can carry out are from your two hands, with your two hands. So whether it's 10 minutes lecture talk, Dharma talk, or 15 or 50, what we can handle is what's going to fit in our mind, what's going to fit in our heart, and what's going to fit in our head. So you could sit there and listen to, you know, 100 minutes of Dharma talk. But what's going to fit in your head, it's going to be finite. It's going to be limited. So how do you do this then? If you know that you're only going to be able to take away things that you can carry with your own hands, and you can't have a cart, you don't have a bag, it's not like you can just wheel your cart in and take everything or drive a truck and pick up a truck and pull all the things in. No, you walk in and you only have two hands. So what are we going to do? And I think the very important thing is that we should, we should always remember, number one, don't leave empty-handed, right? It's limited in your, with your hands, but you still got your hands. So... Don't leave empty-handed and take away the things that you believe is the most precious. There is no right or wrong. There is no set things on what is the most precious. Yes, the market value will tell you that this is more, you know, sells for more money than the other. But what is most precious to you? So even if the Dharma talk is for 50 or 60 or two hours, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, or two hours. You take away with both of your hands very limited amount. And what's most important is take away the things that you are the most impressed, the, most, the thing that gives you the most impression, the deepest impression. But you've got to remember to take that away. When you hear something that you really think is important, Impress it. Impress it onto your mind so that it gets a shape in your head. So that after two hours or after 90 minutes, you walk away or you finish and then you stand up and you ask yourself, what was the thing that I pressed it? I deliberately pressed it. It's not like when master said it and it pressed it onto my mind. No, I pressed it myself. So master would say it. And then I take the words again and I press it hard onto my memory. And that's the thing that I'm going to take away. I get to choose what I pressed in my memory. So it's not very passive. I am passively listening to what the master is saying. But at that moment, I feel that this particular statement I feel is important. So I take it again and I press it harder onto my memory, onto my mind, into my head. And that's what I take away. So what are these things that we take away? What are these things? These are pieces of thoughts. These are pieces of thought that connects the state of mind. And uh, what does that mean? Uh, let, me try to, let me try to explain this. In our usual state of mind, we're usually in this in in a state of turmoil. We're we're easily affected by the things around us. It's hot outside, and our body reacts to it. We begin to sweat, 
and our blood circulation goes faster, and the our our breathing pace picks up. These are very natural, and naturally, our mind is affected by it too. Our mind is affected by our body. Our mind is affected by the surroundings. Our minds are affected by the interaction that we have with people. So that mind, when it's affected, it's sort of ruffled. It's sort of fluctuating. Fluctuating between happiness, joy, and anger, and sorrow, and despair, it, it fluctuates. Sometimes we hear good news, and our spirit is high. Sometimes we hear something that's not to our advantage, or is something that is not to our liking, and it falls down. That's usually what happens. So our mind fluctuates, and that's usually our state of mind. Even when there is nothing happening, our mind is still, but it's easily fluctuating. Things could come in and it would just disrupt that, that sense of serenity. And th something that comes that would make us go high or make us go down. And that's usually what happens. But these, from Dharma discussion, these pieces of thought essentially connects us or transmit us from this state where we are easily, easily fluctuating or easily affected to a state where we can reach a certain stableness, a certain stillness, and or what we call samadhi, where our mind can be more peaceful in that it maintains a steady level of thoughts. And even though there are things around us, people around us, uh, the temperature, the world, the environment around us, but these are the things that sort of, when you are holding on to this thought, that your mind can reach, attain a very, very calming level where even if you have fluctuation, it's not going to be too high or too low. It's going to be very, very calm. So the water is calm even if you drop a big stone into it versus the water fluctuates and the wave goes high and splashing because we're not prepared. So these are the pieces of thought that connects you from a state of mind where you're easily affected to a state of mind where you're calming and you're con in control. And these pieces, pieces of thought come from these Dharma talks and Dharma discussions. The Dharma talks and Dharma discussions is what, these are master's talks and master's speeches. And speeches are like continuous words. They form paragraphs. They form, they're, they're from individual words and they are, they, they form paragraphs and they form sentences and they form these ideas. But these are ideas from words from Dharma Master Cheng Yen that allow us to form these thoughts. And these are the thoughts, as I mentioned, that connects us, that transmit us from the state of mind where it's easily fluctuating to a state of mind where it's more calming and controlled. And why is this important? Because when we're in this state of mind, where it's calm and in control, we get to be, we are more observant and we're more able to receive outside information without affecting our state of mind, without affecting the cap capacity and capability to observe. And because we get to see and observe more, we get to be, we get to make better informed decisions. And that's where wisdom begins to start to form because we get to make better informed decisions because we're able to receive more information and we're able to observe more. And that's what these traces of thoughts are. All these Dharma talks, there are many ideas, many stories, many principles that are given to you. Like I said, it's like a treasure trove 
where they're piled up very high and all you've got are your two hands. So you're going to take what you can take with your two hands from the treasure cove. And these are the treasures. They're like pieces of thought that allow you to transform yourself from a state of mind that, that is very ruffled and disrupted, easily disrupted. I'm not talking about that you are disrupted now, but I'm saying that these are the state of minds where easily affected to a state of mind where you're in control, where the environment doesn't affect you as much, where you are in control of, 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 of your senses and your faculties so that you're able to better listen better look, better see, listen, smell, touch, and taste. Most importantly, to better think and process all the things that you just received. The sight that you receive, the sound that you, that you hear, the feelings that you touch, the taste that you have just tasted with your tongue and your mouth, the, the senses, all these things that give you, all the information can now be better processed into knowledge. And from there, it is more possible that we can raise that knowledge into wisdom and make a good decision. So that's what these Dharma talks are. The Dharma talks are many, many, many streams of these pieces of thoughts. If you can take two of these pieces out and listen to them and impress them onto your mind, then you will be able to use these two pieces to so that your mind and your heart and your thoughts can be more calm, can be more controlled. So how do you do that? Like I said, you hear for 50 minutes, for 60 minutes, it sounds all very wonderful. It sounds all very touching. But at the end, because everything was all touching, you ask yourself, what did you learn? Not much was left. So you need to make sure that you take something out of today, out of this talk, out of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 minutes, 70 minutes, and you know one or two, right? You only got two hands. All these, today we have a full lineup of sharings. What was the thing that impressed you the most? Press it again. Don't just be passively sitting there waiting for the thing to press against your mind. If you think this is important, take it with your hands and press it again onto your mind, onto your memory. So it becomes yours. It's not how strong the message is to press onto your mind. It's that you think this is important. So you take it and you press it onto your mind. Then it becomes yours. It's not the strength of, of the speaker to press onto you, but it's the strength of the listener to press onto their own mind and tell yourself that this is the most impressed thing that I've heard today and I've pressed it onto your mind. And what are those things? Those are the things that connects you from the state of mind where it's easily affected and fluctuating to a state of mind where it's more calming. And that's what the Dharma discussion is really about. And that's what the master was trying to tell us every day. So when you take two of these, when you take two of these, now you've got two. And the next day, you can listen again, and you've got two again. That's why participating in Dharma discussion requires you to do this in a very diligent manner. Because you can only take two each day, or you can only take one, depending on how big it is. Maybe it's one thing, but you need to hold it with both of your hands. And you take it and you walk out. You get to come back in again the next day. But you only got your two hands. That's why you have to be diligent because the treasure cove is huge. You don't get a truck to drive all of it out. You don't, you only got your two hands. So you come in, you see all these treasures. You don't leave empty handed, but you only got two hands. So let me take two of this out. And I leave and I remember these two things that I got. And the next day I come back in again and I take two more things. And all these things that you take away form a link. You take away 
it forms a very, very simple neural link where if you traverse this link often enough, you form this habit that this becomes the shortest pathway. It becomes the pathway that is most often traveled. And that is the Dharma path. So master gives us all these, all these thoughts. If you band all these thoughts together, it becomes a very well-formed path. So are we. We're taking two at a time. And eventually after 10 days, we get 20 of these thoughts. And in our mind, this neural link is formed. And so now we're more able, more, more ways that we can control our minds and we can make sure our minds is more calm and it's not easily fluctuated or affected by the, by, by the surroundings. And that is the Dharma lineage. That is the pathway. So the question that Brother Chin mentioned earlier was that there was about daily chanting and the personal experiences. So I do. I do follow this practice. But I ask myself, what did I get today? It could be the same thing as yesterday. What was the thing that struck me to reach that pathway where it got me from fluctuating thoughts to a thought where I am more in control? So today, that usually every day, there is a similar path that I always travel. But many days might not be the same. So I do this practice every day. And every day for the chanting, there are there are always this, this one point that would hit me and it would get me to feel a, a special feeling. I, I would take it and I would press it onto my heart, onto my mind. But on other days, there could be different things. So even though the chanting is the same every day, you, are, you come in differently. Maybe today I get a good rest. Maybe the next day I didn't. But whatever it is, I take, I follow the chanting and I don't leave empty-handed. I see the chanting and I, and I think, is this something that's going to press me today? If it is, I'm going to take it and I'm going to press it onto my mind so that it becomes impression onto my memory. And that's what I do. So the effectiveness and the realization, you get to realize a lot of things. You get to realize today is just like yesterday. I take the same two chunk of gold bars as yesterday. So today I take these two gold bars. Tomorrow I take these two gold bars. And for the whole week, that's what I take. But then the next day, maybe I come in differently. And then I saw the pearls and I thought to myself, maybe that's what, I, that's what I'll get today. That's what I'll take. And that, the more you take, the more pathway you take, the more tra travel that you do, it becomes something that becomes an anchor in your mind. So that when your mind, when your the state of your mind is ruffled, that you have this anchor that you've thrown down and it sort of gets stuck in there that will be able to help you find your, find your peace or find your center of balance. So I do believe it's important. Daily chanting is important and you it's up to you. It's not the chanting itself that have to seep into your mind. It's up to you to find what is the thing that you want to press hard against your memory. You have to look for it, search for it. Chanting is like a big treasure cove. You walk in, you look around. Chanting starts from the left, up upper left and it goes you know it, it goes from the top right and then it goes down and then it goes through the left it's up to you to find what the the treasure that's going to fit you it's not the treasure that's going to find you you had to find that treasure and when you find it you take it and you press it against your mind against your heart so that you make a deep impression onto it into your memory so that it becomes yours otherwise you're going to leave this treasure cove empty-handed. And when people ask you what you see in there, you're going to be like, wow, it's treasure. Well, show me. I can't because I didn't bring anything out because there's nothing left. No, you walk into the treasure cove. You see that that's what you want and that's what you like. Or maybe there's nothing you, you want, nothing that you like. But you think that what this particular passage is good. You like it today. 
take it, press it hard, and then you walk out. You might not remember all the hundred million things that you see in there, but you remember the two things that you had that you have on your hand. So then, when people ask you, "Well, you walk into the treasure, what did you see?" I saw a lot, and these are the things that I like the most. The very next day, you come in again and you look at it again, and you take it out again. People ask you, or you don't. You don't. People don't ask you, but you ask yourself, and then you realize that's what I want. That's what I like. That's what we get out of it. But if you are not active in doing this, waiting for the treasure to press on you, then I'm sorry, you're not going to get much as much out of it as if you were active and actively searching for the things that you like, searching for the things that you want, and then press it onto your memory, as in taking it both with your hands, and then walk out of Treasure Cove. And you can tell people that's what I got today. So it's up to us. It's not going to be the chanting that's going to get to you. It's you who have to get that yourself. Okay, thank you. That's my sharing for today. And I hope that answers for you, or at least uh, make sure that you know that for the following discussions and Dhamma talks and all the sharings that you're going to hear, please take away something. Actively search for the things that you like. Don't just be passively listening. And just listen, and then you say, that's I think this is really good, important. I'm going to take it, press it onto your mind. So when at the end or when the next week, Sister Su Ching wrote all these, writes all these wonderful poems, you remember, it's not just the poems. You took these gold bars in your hand and say, look, I've got them too. It's not just your poems, but I got them too. And that's when we walk away with treasure in our hands. Thank you. Canon Brother Joe, thank you for the very insightful sharing I think it will be a great reflection uh, for all of us. And I uh, will take the points you brought up um, in our next um, discussion. Excellent. Um, well, next we have Brother Sean Tan, uh, also from the above. Uh, I'm just going to share with her positive deviation. Uh, Brother Sean uh, doesn't need any introduction. He's a regular, regular uh, sharer on this platform. And uh, Brother Sean, also from Malaysia, as I understand. and. Uh, Platform is all yours, Brother Sean. I know you are rushing for time, so platform is all yours. Thank you, thank you, Brother Chin. Uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, for those who from different uh time region, nice to meet you again. Uh, thank you so much for uh Brother Victor and Sister Janet for changing the time for me. Um, uh, because this time uh time slot should be uh Brother Victor's and Sister Janet sharing, but uh we got another uh things. Uh, Ching Sir, uh, Ching Shou uh, we have a training course today. There's a reason why I have to change that. So, uh, firstly, thank you so much, uh, Brother Victor, and also Sister Janet. Today, I'm going to share about the power of positive uh, deviance. Uh, let me share my slide. Um, okay, it's over here. Like what Brother Joel has shared just now, um, how can we apply uh, Dharma into our daily life and what we have uh, listened from Master Dharma, how it can be applied into our daily life. I try to do that also uh, every day in my life uh, in Ching Se Abode. And I try to read also some books of Ching Se, uh, out of uh, Tsuji because I want to get know what is outside the perspective to the world and what is the uh, tools that we can use in Siji. So uh, that there was a, a book that I come across named The Power of Positive Events. Uh, this is a book that really nice. Uh, it was introduced by uh, Sister Yachi, which is a Siji volunteer from South Africa. And then this book uh, show us, uh, really struck me. Uh, why I want to share this book because I, I believe that this book could help us as a Chichi volunteers uh, working into daily Chichi, uh, I mean like uh, charity works and also our self um, uh, practice. So what is about defense? Defense, uh, if you if you are studying uh, mat mathematics related causes uh, before in your um, secondary schools or like in your university life, you should be able to come across uh, deviance 
words, something like that. It is about um a norm that in our daily life, everything is kept change. It is pretty normal that um, sometimes the weather get good and sometimes get weather get bad. So the temperatures uh, vary uh, hot and cold. So it, in our daily life, there's this impermanence, wu chang. So that come across um, the events, the changes in our daily life. So this book is about uh, the power of positive events. Events, it can be a positive events or negative events. It change. For example, like uh, in recent years, uh, weather, it, it, it depends a lot. So due to climate change, so sometimes we feel too hot and sometimes we feel too too cold or like in, in the norm, summer would be cold, it would be hot, but sometimes the, the weather change or sometimes it should be winter, but the sun is hot like a salmon. So this is like the the norm is out of norm, but some uh deviance it, it, it can't be a bad one because sometimes we, we seek for something differences that we should change our life. Like us, uh, we as a lay person, we have our norm, daily norm. So without Dharma, so we just keep going the same life. So if we have habits, so we, we just practice it practice the same habits every day. So this book, The Power of Positive Deviance, is it's about um, some innovators um, that solve the world targets problem. So in this book, it introduced about some stories, uh, the, the real stories and the still scenario happen in our world, like, um, like a poverty issue, like uh, it's, HIV issues and some other issues that can't be easily solved. So in this book, they did provide some ideas on how we can change even the target target's problem. So um positive um, the power of positive in this book is actually uh, leverage on the power of positive deviance. It is about a few individuals or in a group who find unique ways to look at overcome and seemingly insoluble difficulties. And they, they they found out the possibilities and then they change it and then they make a difference. So this is just like uh, the, the, the photo on the left hand side. Uh, positive deviance is just like a flashlight. So sometimes this is actually um, ideas or solution happens around us, just that we doesn't have that awareness to find out that and then to use it and then solve that the, the problem exists around us. So this book brings some ideas and um example on, on that. So uh they bring a example in 1955 to 1975. Uh, uh there, there is a Vietnam War in between. So a lot of people um get affected. So even after Vietnam War, uh, lots of Vietnamese they are severely affected by the, um, by 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 these drugs. Um. So post Vietnam War, um, a lots of the people get into famine, and then they are heavily uh, uh depend for foreign aid supply supply. So their life is so bad. And then they can't really get a normal life. Uh, even after Vietnam War, so the economic get destroyed, the family, the villages all get destroyed. So they need a lots of resources to rebuild, and rehabilitate uh, the conditions so that they can have a better life. So that there, there, there was a time where a lots of researcher, uh, coming from all around the world to check, uh, how much and how they can help for those Viet, uh, victims affected by the uh, Vietnam War. So they come and then they research. Some of the researchers, they think uh, these people, uh, these uh, villagers, they need a lot of supply from around the world. So the people keep sending uh, goods from around the world and then they try to change uh, the conditions. But as we, as we know, that would be quite impossible. Like what happened in, um, in 
in Poland, there was a lot, uh, there, there's a lot of refugee in Poland. So how much a, a supply that we can send, it won't be uh, enough. So they have to adapt to the their, their, their local condition. So there, there, there was a serious issue they found in the Vietnam after the Vietnam War, which is uh, child malnutrition. So child malnutrition is something that is really uh, serious because a lot of kids hunger and then they can't get a good nutrition and then some of them can't even survive. So a lot of them, they, they pass away. So how they can um, change this uh, problem? So they start to have a lot of research and then they found out that um, the problem is that the GDP and also the economic in Vietnam is so bad. And then they kind of like link poverty is the reason that uh, causes child maltreation. So from the surface, we can, we can, we can just uh, link directly, easily. So poverty, without enough resources, without enough uh, support, the children can't have in, uh, good nutrition food. That's the reason why they get malnutrition, right? So this is something that easily um, get concluded uh, by using a basic or like the observation. But we found out that 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 there was a special scenario. So um, during a, a researcher, uh, which is the author for this the power of standard deviance, he found out that um, in several villages of the southern part of Hanoi, uh, they found out that there are sixty to seventy percent of the children under the age of three were in a stage of malnutrition, but. In another way around, why? They are 30 to 40% of the children, which is three out of three to four out of 10 children, fall into normal nutrition in the same impoverished environment. So for the whole village, the villagers are working in the same field. So every day they're having like almost same life every day. And then the resources they get is just the same. So the three to four children out of 10, they are having the same resources like other children. But why? Malnutrition is not 100%. Why they are like 30% to 40% of them, they are fall into normal condition. Oh, that's the thing that uh, bring attention to the researcher. So the researcher keep seeking what is the reason? So they take a lot of research and then they go into their life and then they follow through the every day of their life. So they found out that for normal families, uh, because they have to work from start from early morning. So what they do? So they provide only one. Some of them, they provide only two meal. So because they have to work, start from early morning until night, so they provide one to two meal to the children. So they're giving them a larger meal from early morning before they start working. So they feed the children and then they start working for the whole day. And then at the end of the day, they feed the children again. That would be the normal families. That doesn't uh, make uh, any difference. I mean, like uh, everyone makes uh, having having the same meal, uh, like the, 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 the amount of meal that, obtained from the um, foreign aid is still the same. So normally, so they, they, they actually receive the food and also the resources based on quota. So the children, every children uh, receive the same amount for food. But uh, the researchers found out that the positive deviance family, they provide the same food, but small and frequent meal. So they provide like um, three to four meals every day and then the portions will be smaller. And then they're adding some vegetables and wild aquatic organism that they, they found out uh, in the field. So the researchers found out that, wow, with only a small difference habits they bring into the life, it changed the children's nutrition condition. So this would be, this would be like a very uh, simple logic thinking of because the children, they can't absorb all the nutrients once. So they need to have 
lots milk and then uh, small portions and then have different uh, uh different um nutritions but th this is something that is not easy to spread the concept so that every children they can get a normal nutrition because for the vegetables they are actually getting the vegetables um it's not like uh, the normal vegetables. This is uh, something that you can get it along the way. Just like um, early in 1960s, masters with uh, Qing Si Abu, uh, masters, uh, Sun Ren and also Qing Si Sifu, they get the vegetables sometimes from uh, the, 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 the forest. So they get those, um, uh, in Chinese we call it ye cai. So, uh, the, the vegetables that grow from some uh, some from out where. So this is not some vegetables that they grow by the farmers. These vegetables they re bring with some nutrition also. So but a lots of uh, and also the aquatic organism. We we are vegetarian, but for those people they are not vegetarians. They actually adding some aquatic organism that they get from food. But this concept is kind of like a new concept for the normal family. They kind of like. Um, don't feel like this is a proper way. So it will be very hard for the um the the researcher to change the normal family life. So how they can do so? So they start to have the normal uh, the the positive deviance family to give them uh training and then they 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 have a sharing, and then that that that's the difference makes the sharing from a researcher doesn't affect. The villages, the normal, uh, uh the the malnutrient fa uh, families, but for those, fa uh, parents, they are actually having a normal nutrition, um, uh, children, so they share, that makes a difference. So this is how we can see, um, in Suji, we make the same, uh, we you use the same strategy, sharing. So we got a lot of sharing every day. So you can see masters, she can sit, uh, sit, sit, sit in, in, in the room for the whole day and listen for sharing. Sharing is a power to make a change to those that doesn't start because uh, from the sharing, the person that already changed, they can start to make other people feel that that is possible. So the, uh, the villagers that having malnutrition children from the, um from from their neighbors they're having a normal conditions children so they start to learn oh okay so they, they start to having a lot of meal extra meals and then get getting more nutrients nutrition this is not something they get from outside so positive events they use the power of the local which is the same in suji we have a uh, local volunteer so it start to have some good example and then they start from sharing and then that change and gradually the 40% of the participating young children have to reach normal nutrition standard and another 20% they transit from malnutrition, severe malnutrition to moderate malnutrition. So the program implement 80% uh, of uh, after one year, 80% of the children have gradually uh, changed into normal nutrition standard. So it gradually start to expand from uh, one year, two years, five years, it change, it expand to another uh, villages. So uh, we, we can see that uh, sometimes we need to have a good example around us, but that needs us to change our mind. So like this um, half empty, or half full uh, cup of water. It is the same, but from the perspective of the power of positive uh, events, we, we can see that perspective is so important. If we can look in a positive way to seek for the problem, we can find some solution. So for example, like the researcher, they found out that why they are 30% to 40% of children are in normal nutrition condition, although the supplies from the foreign aid is all the same. So they found out that, wow, there are some 
example that we can learn. So that is how we change our world. In Tsuji, we got some positive events, uh, example too, a lot. So I just bring uh, a few uh, that I know. I, I, I believe that there are lots happening around us. So for example, like in 2015, there are lots of uh, refugees um, came into Turkey. So there are lots of uh, beggars, children beggars, and also child laborers everywhere in Turkey. But uh, they found out that in Sudan Gazi, uh, especially in the uh, in, in in the uh, Turkey, there are gradual decrease in in the numbers of children breaker, and that draw attentions to the government. So they try to seek what is the what makes the difference, and then we found out that uh, there was Suchi volunteers working there every day. They support the children and then bring the child laborers to student uh, to to study and then a lot of ch child beggars uh, they change into students so that actually makes a difference so this example they bring the attention uh, to the government and also UN UNICEF and then they start to learn and then what is the difference that can uh, change the children so they found out that wow Suji, we got we have got Elm Elm and Hill uh, school international school, so the school do uh change the children, so the children uh, start to learn. However, uh, in the same time, uh, Turkish government actually they 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 do they do having the same schools uh, provided to the um uh the 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 refugee, but why uh they doesn't change them. They have clinics for uh. They have hospital that provide to re a refugee, but why the refugee doesn't attend to those hospital in the early days? That 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 the reason is that because uh, Tsuchi, we 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 mentions about love, uh, gratitude, respect, and love. So, whenever the refugee come into our clinics, come into the schools, they feel like they are coming back, uh, coming back to the home. They feel someone is accompany them so they can speak uh, freely in Arabic, but not uh, in, in, in the normal schools and also the normal hospital. Everyone just speaking Turkish. So they makes the difference. So after Turkish government and UNICEF, they found out that. So they start to assist uh, 350,000 to 400,000 children in education using uh, Tsuchi's Yamanahyu model. So sometimes uh, Tsuchi, we do have um, the power to change the society, uh, just like in 1990s, uh, Indonesia, the, the, the government is actually uh, having limited resources. So Tsuchi volunteers, we got entrepreneurs that can support. They are actually helping uh, the country to make uh, lots of changes. So we built Thai village uh, to those uh, affected, severely affected by the flood. So after a few years, the government getting uh, condition getting better and better. So the government start to learn the way Tsuchi helped to rebuild, reconstruct uh, the whole village that affected by the, by, by, by the uh, uh, nature disaster. So the government right now, they have enough resources, they have enough power to change the people's life. So they start to learn from Tsuchi, like uh, the Thai village that we built in Indonesia. Because the in the Thai village that we built in Indonesia, we must just really uh, go into the details. So for example, like the locations of the most, where should it located? It should be located in the middle of the village. So a lot of um basic basic infrastructure that normally that doesn't include that Tsuchi we include into the reconstructions um uh village. So that actually makes a difference. So that's how um right now the government learned uh from Tsuchi. So there are there there, there are actually steps uh for us to achieve uh positive deviance. So the first thing is that uh, we have to define the problem. So uh, according to author, so we need to 
understand what is the problem that we want to change. And then the second will be uh, a researcher, a person that want to change, he or she should determine the presence of positive defense individual or group. So for example, like what um, uh, happened in, in Vietnam. So the normal nutrition student families will be the positive defense individual. So the third part will be discovering the uncommon practice. So this is really important. So what makes the difference? So just like in Suji, um, in Suji, um, uh, Suji World, we can see a lot of uh, diligence volunteers. But why there are some volunteers that are happy every day? There must be some uncommon practice. Maybe the habits, maybe the practice, maybe some things that is not the same with others volunteer. Or like why the volunteers get uh so energetic so there must be some inner power that is different from earth this is how we uh discover we need to determine the presence of the positive ends and discover what is the uncommon practice and then the fourth one would be program design so the best program design that they said will be sharing sharing is something that can change others behavior so that's the reason why we need to have um every every week a dharma sharing. We need to have every day listen to master's teaching. We have to uh listen from our brothers and sisters sharing. So that makes the difference because he or she is the same. I mean, having the same uh, lifestyle we first, but he or she having a difference and extraordinarily uh um achievement. So there must be something different. So we need them for sharing. So after sharing, we can see if the person listen and then uh, follow the, 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 the program design. For example, like we, we have like uh, two or three days uh, retreats. So there's the program design that makes a change. For example, like we have um, we have a good model. So we share it and then we design it inside our retreat. So to others people they can learn and then after we have retreat we monitor it evaluate does the training does the retreat does the program makes the change to us other people if that's successful we will be scaling up just for example like we have some program that successfully carry out in taiwan so there'll be a duplicate into others country scale it up so this is the step of achieving positive events. So for me, myself, when I'm reading this book, I feel very really enjoy uh, uh, studying this book because in Suji, we use the same way. But uh, by reading this book, I found out that um, it has a proper way. I mean, like a, a standard way, a standard procedure uh, for us to follow, uh, like that, that, that the steps that we should follow. So in Suji, how we, why we didn't have so much, I mean, like a uh, professional researcher, but we can have it the same way because uh, masters always mentioned to us, this is about um, how much uh, heart that you have. So uh, that there was a special, uh, uh, th uh, th 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 there is a part discussions about why positive events is so good but why it can be expanded throughout the world. So for example, like uh, solving malnutrition, uh, they have some good example already. Why can't this example expand from Vietnam to Cambodia to some other country? Why can't it do so? Why can't the example expand it to North Korea? Why? So this is really a great question. So they found out that in the research, so they study, they, they try to um they try to replicate from what they uh, learn in Vietnam into other country, but they feel why they feel because self attachment. So that is something that's really interesting. It happens in Suji also sometimes. So the good example why it can't be expand and then replicate in other country. This is because some other countries when they uh, listening to the example, they will tend to say what? They will tend to say, 
though that that is impossible. This example only applied in Vietnam, but it wouldn't be possible to replicate in some country. For example, like in Cambodia. No, 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 no. Our our daily norm is different. We can't replicate what you have in Vietnam. That is impossible. So there are lots of cases they try and they get failed. That's the reason why we have SDG seven uh seventeen uh, seventeen SDG for two thousand thirty. We need to have zero poverty, uh, zero hunger. Till now, until now, we can't solve the problem. That is all because of self attachment. So self attachment is something that happened everywhere. That is that that is the reason why we need to have practice. So, um, from the books, it it. It brings me, uh, it let me uh, think a lot more than just the books, the example that I saw in the books. So from positive ends, this is something that applied in the so social society. But this positive deviance, how we can use it in our daily life. So this book, how we can link it with Master's Dharma, how we can link the example in the book into our daily life and we can change it in our daily life. So that actually bring, bring, uh, let me uh, think a lot about that. And then in my, uh, from, 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 for myself, I change, I can see um, my habits is not a good, I, I having a not, not a good habits before I joined Suji, but how can I change? So for in, in Suji, I found out that the best way that changed myself is actually, um, Bamboo bank. Bamboo bank is actually something that um, in every day, there's a click, there's a point, like what Brother Joe mentioned just now. There must be a click, a point that can strut yourself. So I think uh, Bamboo bank is something that makes me to start positive defense. So every day before I start my life, like what Master said, donating any coins that I have, into the bamboo bank and then make a good vow. So that good vow leads me to change, start to having a good, a uh, small change, a spark in my life, telling myself I need to change. I want to get a better life. I want to have a get better habits. And then the normal deviates, every day the same. I mean like the bad habits and everything the same. But with bamboo bank, it start to have a, struck a, 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 a strike in my mind. I want to have a better life. I want to a better man. I want to help people. So every day there, there's a small wave, there's a small wave and then the wave getting better and better. And then it become a new norm. I start to change my life. I start to uh, talk with other people in good manner. I start to behave better. So that actually something that we can change in our life, this positive deviance. So we can see the difference at first, there's only a small spark. So there is only some thoughts in your mind, but that doesn't translate it into action. I I, 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 does, um, I, I do share, uh, I mean, I think last year or two years ago about habits. So habits is something that is really important. So whenever you start with some uh, positive events in your life, it's actually start to change your habits. So from the norm, every day, the norm that you have, the bad habits, the bad, uh, using a bad way to communicate with other people, when you start with some good thoughts, a positive event start, it start to change your daily life from thoughts to practice. And then gradually the practice we reinforce our thoughts. So the although it seems like, oh no, every day 50 cents donations, it seems like it, it doesn't make a difference. But um, for the power of tiny gains, uh, there's a book called Atomic Habits. And I think it's just a good book too. And then it mentioned about every day, if we can have 1% better for every day. So after one year, 365 days, we can achieve 37 0.78% of differences. If we get worse every day for 
three hundred and sixty five, and then you can de you you we can decline until zero point zero three. So that me makes a huge difference. So start from um by joining Switch, I can see the power of deviance is actually something that we can change, not just the society. It can bring it into our daily life, like what um I shared previously. Uh, positive defense is something that is actually we can apply in our daily life um, by using the San Ping. And then um, the, 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 there is the four right efforts that we can learn in our daily life, which to abandon something that uh, the horizon of an awesome state of mind. Uh, so for whatever that bad thoughts bad actions that we have. So we need to change it. We need to stop it, abandon it. And then for whatever unwholesome state of mind that unarisen, prevent it. So that is very really important. Prevent from having bad thoughts. So that is how we stop all the bad things. So for whatever bad things that we have done, stop it. For whatever bad things that we haven't done, prevent it. And then the other two right efforts is arose the unarisen wholesome mind uh, state of mind. And then the last one will be maintain the arisen wholesome state of mind. So this is just like uh, the, the, the blue dots. So stop it. Do not go to the unwholesome state of mind. Do not go for the negative deviance. Stop, uh, stop it. Whenever you have goals to the negative deviance, stop um, stop it so whatever whenever you have you, you are uh the, the stage you are standing right now keep it keep it prevent from uh prevent the unarisen unwholesome state of mind and then start to arose whatever good habits you can have so start with positive deviance and then remember to maintain the arise arisen wholesome state of mind so in uh things abode, uh as a pra uh, pure practitioners, um I think we are lucky enough. We are really really lucky enough because we got a lot of way that remind us to get into the four right thoughts and then to start with positive deviance. So because whatever we done, uh in the bad manners, we get easily get reminded by the people around us. So although sometimes people doesn't remind us. There are a lot of good examples for us to learn. They change us. So we need a lot of um, positive events um, happen around us. So if possible, as a church volunteer, uh, we need to seek ourselves. We, 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 we need to seek for the positive events example in our life and then to learn from them. Not just that we ourselves, we should be the one to be the seed of love a seed of change to make the society become better. So we need to remember, uh, Masters always mentions about the three 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 vow, uh, everything is start from our mind. Uh, purify uh, one's mind. So if we can change our thought, if we can change our mind, so we can be the person, the positive events. So whenever we change our mind, we change our behavior. The second will be the society will be peaceful. So if we can be the positive events, we will be the seed. We will be the one that change people around us. And then we can get a peaceful society. And then if we can have a collectively peaceful society, then we can have there will be no disaster in the world. So that everything, it goes back to what? Our own our one self. If you can be the one who makes a difference, and then I believe the world, you, you can change the world. Uh, that's all for uh, my today's sharing. Thank you so much. And thanks so much, uh, Brother Sean, for uh, a great sharing. Um, I, I guess, yes, we need to draw the word support to the TVNs, but very mindful, like you say, our self-attachment, and that is a great hindrance for us. Um, and uh, obviously, I must often say, 
at the end of the day, when we cultivate, we need to change. We need to have self-correction uh, in all the thoughts that we find uh, in ourselves as it goes among people. The service of our afflictions uh, and also the, the tiny little gains that Master also often mentioned that uh, we should do little by little and and what your graph show is the compounding effect of every little gains and, and advancement that we walk. Gunning so much, uh, Brother Sean, been a great sharing and wonderful to see you back again on this platform. All right, so next we have um, Brother Victor and Sister Janet. Again, they don't, uh, we, no introduction needed, uh, the regular share in here. Now we're going to go into a very interesting subject uh, this morning uh, from both Brother Victor and Sister Janet. Modern flying bodhisattva. Now I I, I know that I'm aware that you're in you're from Taiwan, you're in Beijing, you're in the US, and you really, really you covered the globe. And you know when I look at your your title, it reminds me of bodhisattva emerging from the air. So here you go. Uh, all yours a platform. Okay, starting flying. Okay. Yeah. Dear beloved Master Zen Yan, Abode Masters, Global Suji family, and online listener. Good morning. What a wonderful day for everyone. This is uh, Victor J. My Dharma name is Ji Yong. This is Jenny Yao, and my Dharma name is Ci Ya. Every time we have a topic that we want to share with you, we think that is the best topic for you. Uh, everyone see the picture uh, of two birds that are flying. They must be in the sky. Can you fly? You can fly just like the bird, two feet down and standing on a nothing and a flying. Uh, that must be a that must be flying high with the bridge like this. You see the picture high and long. Would anyone be afraid to walk on it? Uh, you look again, uh, just follow along the mountain if the floor is glass. Some people are still afraid to walk on it. Is this some kind of high anxiety? <laughs> if you were put, the, uh, put at the top of the high building, look down, uh, would it be frightening when look down? Uh, in this picture of in the high mountain, both feet are hanging down. When looking down, will we get nervous and uh, frightening? So how do you feel when you are looking up from the ground? When we see a flock of seagulls flying in the sky. So beautiful, isn't it? Please look again in the sky. What are they? They are also flying in the sky and can also turn around. Will you fear them when looking at them? Or do you want to uh, envy those who can fly? Would you want to give it a try to fly up in the sky? Okay. Uh, the kind of flying, can we look back? This is a look down from up the sky. When you see the those who can look down from the up and the sky, if you if um if it were you, does it uh, make you feel envious and nervous? Do you want to give it a try? Don't scare, okay. <laughs> to tell you the truth, at the beginning, I felt a little nervous and the fear, but I found for any new experience, I need to build up my inside thinking first. Trust each other can build trust inside. Trust each other and can find ways to learn. Build up confidence, uh, then you will have the courage to go for it. Let me share my experience with you all. To tell the truth, one day before my daughter encouraged us to try the feeling of flying in the sky, I did not have the courage to promise it. My daughter also said many people come to this city to experience the flying sports. 
you will see many people are flying in the sky. And many people bring their own equipment with them to the train station, as you can see in the picture. So the first thing that comes to my mind is that people here are familiar with uh, this kind of sports. Okay, so after a good night's sleep, we register the sport with the college. We started experiencing it. We took a small bus with the coaches and uh, other participants. Music is on in the car. You see the beautiful view in the mountain along the way. About a 30 minutes drive, one coach joke with us that if you feel fearful, just close your eyes when you are up in the sky. The other coach say, say if you feel fear, don't look down. <laughs> just look straight to the far away the place. Every coach is very experienced. Uh, let us uh, easy our mind. I watch every uh, I watched very careful about the coach and the listening there, sharing and instruction. The coach always uh, used the happy tone to talk with, uh, to talk to us in the bus. I found the coach is adjusting our nervous emotion. So after the 30 minutes preparation lesson on the bus, the bus reached a flat land on the mountain. You won't feel the height of the mountain. So everybody feel at ease. And each one follow their own coach to go to their spot to prepare the equipment that we are going to use. Listen to the instruction carefully. I also watch other groups action. The coach said that if you know how to run like jogging, then you can fly. We're not going to jump off the cliff. <laughs> So we spread the equipment on the ground and the forward extraction. Uh, there are many uh, threads we need to spread it out. Uh, those spreads will control the direction of the uh, frying, cannot mingle together. Then we will our equipment, watch this uh, on my back. It is an emergency uh, parachutes, not chair. We will uh, have and parachutes after we wear it, put my cell phone away so we couldn't take any picture. Then we are ready to go. So we are the beginner. The coach helped me to secure the flying equipment together. So right before we start, coach said, smile. Then we take the first picture and he will record the whole flight so that I, I feel much more comfortable. After we have checked everything, the coach said, let's wait for the wind comes. Uh, he said, run, then we run together like jogging. The wind comes and we jog and suddenly we are in the air. I felt very excited. I also felt a little fear. So will, will you be afraid if you look down from above the cloud, so the coach brought out height higher and higher. I looked down, I don't feel high anxiety. Then I look at the uh, far away places. Coach want me to look up to. So don't did you feel a feel, right? Right. Okay. So the coach kept on the chat with me. It, uh, it looks that we are getting closer to the sun and the leg is below us is getting smaller. The houses below look like a, a matchbox on the graceland. After I got used to the overall environment, I said, I hear the wind, uh, the wind sound. The coach say, because we are the flying very fast. So let me listen. You hear the sound? Are you okay? Yes. 
<laughs> and the cost always adjusts out <laughs> most <laughs> and paired with us. And uh, while after for a while, he will ask you, are you okay? Then you say yes. And you are turning a very fast uh, technique adjust your emotion. Don't let you feel. Anybody want to guess what's the height when we were in the sky? My coach told me we are lucky that when we first started to fly, we met the up current. And he said his skill is so good, so he can use the up current to bring us higher and higher. Do you can see we're flying higher. The highest uh, reach. Yeah, you can see uh, we are turning around in the sky. Not yet. So the highest reach is 2,000 meters. Is it dry? It's on the bigger, bigger. Yeah, yes, yes. The coach asked me if I want to try something new. I said yes. Wow. And the coach started to turn us upside down. I can feel the pulling force when we are doing the circling in the sky. After we have a very steady, let's see, after we have this very steady. The frightening, the coach would like to create something different. So then we will be the more impressive about the sport. So you can see uh, the coach adjusts the direction. It's the different. <laughs> That's easy. very fast, uh, and I, I told him, uh, I feel very busy. So he said, okay. So uh, it's it's kind of ready to land it. So the whole flight took about twenty minutes. So let's listen. This <laughs> Hello, wife. You made it. My Hello. So our granddaughter always see me and my wife together. When she find out that only my wife has landed, but not seeing me to land, she kept on asking, where is my grandpa? And she almost start to cry. Okay, then... Then after that is uh, Victor start to land in. Please uh, listen. Uh, what's another story? Hello.
<laughs> so we can, yeah, so we can see the lovely three-year-old is doing a welcome to us. Okay. After we just landed, my daughter uh, gave us a spot interview. Want us to, he uh gave us speech. Speech. My wife and I made it. I'm very grateful for my daughter's encouragement because we are the uh we have the encouragement and the trust so that we can have the chance to fly on the sky. I can fly. I want to sing the song. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. So when my daughter asked, how did you make it? I want to share my answer. The sayings from my wife's is that I remember, remember is if other people can do it, I can do it too. So my thought is that there are many people flying in the sky. I can fly in the sky too. Also with my relatives help, they give us encouragement at the beginning, told us they have done it too. They pick one of the best company for us to participate. I think we must trust first before we can do it. Trust can generate a desire to learn. The other is to have confidence in the coaches. During the flight, the coach always notice us, notice our reaction to give us the best support so that we can feel stable and safe and fun. They know how to manage students' emotion. Let the student has the confidence up in the 2,000 meter high, along with the coach. Student with the confidence, then we can learn. So age is no problem. With a healthy mind, we have a healthy body. The experience, as long as you have love in your heart, you will trust. With trust, then you fly in the sky without any fear. So from this experience, I find I can fly. I'm the modern flying pusa. Any chance we can do, then we should be there. So I wish I'm a modern flying pusa. 2017, we have a chance to fly to the heady to help the people there. We heard that they have the um, malaria, uh, malaria also have the robbery, even though the we, even though the weather is very hot there, uh, we can overcome the fear, uh, but we go there to help. So from this picture, you can see uh, when we was in the heady, we went over there to help those the people. We uh, give the some food, the rice uh, uh, distributing. So we uh, also got a chance to help disaster relief of the Tufts fire at the Santa Rosa in Northern California. There are more than 2,800 houses are burned down to ashes. You can see only the stone material or car metal left in the ashes. We relieved the disaster hit people to come to our family gathering over there weekly. We also held a Jinsu aphorism class for the families to come. We wish the whole family to come to the class so that we can help the whole family with warm feeling in their heart. To change the atmosphere of the family, that people still care for them even after the fire. See, we also held Christmas party for the people affected by the fire. To under, we want to understand their problems after the fire. Okay, then we also have a chance. So we went to the Houston, Texas, in the United States, to expose the people there. Uh, who's suffering the Harvey currency disaster. And very interesting the story. 
we met at the Houston airport. When we got off the plane gate at the airport, we knew the, from uh, the arrangement that, that we should uh, gather at the certain gate to meet uh, the Tsuji. Uh, we found that the gate is uh, at a far away side of the airport. So when we were wondering which direction, suddenly a lady who is the, driving the electricity car uh, wants us to jump in her car, then uh, take us to the gate we want. And, he, and she said, it is a free ride for us with a big smile and the will to take a selfie with us. We were amazing. Uh, when we checked with the brother and the sister, they told us that we have held the airport with the hot food transported to the airport by boat when they were uh, surrounded by the flood and the whole airport people have nothing to eat. Uh, that is why when the electricity car lady saw us and wear the city uniform, she gave, uh, she would give us a free ride. So uh, when we attend uh, uh, Houston's uh, disaster relief activity, the Hurricane Harvey is the result of the extreme weather condition. The heavy rain has changed the downtown Houston into a lake. Everything is submerged in the water and the water stayed there for a long time. We took two buses on September 23rd, 2017, early morning from Houston to the place where Hurricane Harvey hit first in Rockport, Texas. We go there to check to do the disaster relief work by comforting them and distributing cash cards. Uh, because the disaster area is huge, many people are so helpless when we arrived. We felt that we can comfort them after the disaster, which they have never thought of before. We are very appreciated that we can have the chance to fly to Houston to help people there as the flying pusa should do. Because Suji would like to have many volunteers to go to help. So we flew from China to Houston and the Many Suji volunteers also flew in from different places in the U.S. We also went to the Mexico to attend the free cleaning, although although the uh, we are not a direct uh, the we are not a doctor. We also don't know the Mexican uh, language, but we still go there to help. After the earthquake at the Mexico City, Suji went to the help, and after the incident. There were a plan to help at the, the Mexico City for the medical outreach activity organized by the Tsuji. We got invited to attend one of the activity. I was trained as the dental assistant and have the health free cleaning before. We have attended the medical outreach in the North California at Modesto as the volunteer. So we asked uh, anything we can do to help. The answer is whatever you can do before in a tsuji, you can come to help. So we joined the activity at the, the Mexico City. Uh, tsuji has developed a uh, local volunteer and uh, they need to train the local volunteer. Victor was uh, doing the volunteer training for many years. So uh, he assumed the task. Once the Tsuji volunteer get together, we can always find a way to make it work. Uh, he prepared the training material, and there is a local international school students come to help as a translator for the training class. It works great. Uh, we went to the campfire in the North California to help. Uh, before we joined the campfire disaster relief, we heard that the survivor have moved to the small town called Chico, which is at the hillside of the campfire. The campfire 
happened at the Paradise City is uh, up in the hill. So most the hotel uh, downtown Chico are hard to get. And there is some disease there because the drinking water was contaminated somewhere in town. If we want to go there, we have to take care of our, our own accommodation by ourselves. Uh, uh, do you want to go? Our answer is yes. We stay at, the, stay at the hotel we can get or share houses with other volunteers if there is a vacancy. Uh, if there's no accommodation available, we just drive back and forth between our home to Chico, which is a four hours drive one way. That is why you can see on the video we're going to show that we are seen by driving on the road to and back from Chico. We we spend 26 days 26 days at Chico, either by driving every day. Sometimes we got lucky that we can share a room with other volunteers who has extra space to share, so we can save some driving effort. Uh, one time we lost our voice because talking too much as an intake. So we stay at Bay Area to attend the fundraising on the street in downtown Oakland. We need to greet the survivors when we started our intake job at the center. Usually we can hear different stories that the survivor have experiences with the disaster. Uh, then we can check the data and provide the cash card to them. We learn more from the disaster uh, survivor than people just watch the TV news. Because it's a long drive, so we want to wake the driver all the time. I'm the driver and the Jen, sometimes Jen is the driver. We have to find a way to do that. The, the way we use to sing songs to keep us awake. Let's take a break for one minute. Would you like, Would you like to, to sing? <laughs> listen to our singing? Bear with it. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. <laughs> Something wrong for the video. Uh, sorry. Okay. So during the pandemic period, we still have to, to help the people in the Santa Cruz in the United States who has the suffering the damage from the wildfire. It is about one hour's drive to get there. Some volunteers are conservative and wants to make sure uh, it is safe to do the volunteer work. And we need more volunteers to do the work to help the people doing the intake job. Um, we heard the survivors provide their story that is kind of the fire is uh, in the biggest in the 40 years. One person wrong uh, for his life, uh, bringing his dog and the parrot his story was on the front page on a San Francisco newspaper. We still did the distributing of the uh, cash card to the to the survivors of the Santa Cruz wildfire at the Santa Cruz Civic Center. This time, the fire is getting getting very close to our home in the Silicon Valley. As you can see. From the map, we have uh, prepared to the uh, to help the people there. If anything happened, we have uh, joined a different meeting in the city about our disaster relief action plan. Since our home is in the area, it is the first time I feel that I will help the those the survivor uh, elsewhere. 
our ourselves uh, may uh, come uh, written at any moment. I understand more about the uh, uh, impermanence. Impermanence. Yeah. Yes. So. So besides that, we also have a chance to work as a volunteer in China. So let's share some experience there. So we have the chance to visit local elderly center on a regular schedule. So we design different activities when we visit the elderly center in the community. We spend a more pleasant time, some pleasant time with them for each visit. So we have some visits, some elderly people whose age is over 100 years old. Yeah. Like the lady you can see in the picture. The, the right lower of the, the picture. Yeah, the right lower of the picture. And uh, we, we make friends with them. Later, we are like family and we respect each other and we treat them as our parents. And we were also doing volunteer training. It is a chance we got and we will, uh, we are willing to do it for a long period of time, over 10 years. So we have to provide monthly regular training for those volunteers who want to get certified as a Tsuji certified volunteers. It's a very diligent uh, effort for everybody. So, so we do the training with a very diligent mind. We help more people as much as we can. We, uh, so we assume different tasks in a training, like Janet uh, assumed the task as MC. I kind of uh, take care of the computer network display control uh, to make sure uh, during the training, everything, I mean, the sound and the PPT are running smoothly. People can hear it. The microphone are working. Uh, and of course, uh, we have to do the course design. And sometimes we invite some instructor. Uh, if we don't have enough instructor, we will be the instructor. So we learn as we are doing the jobs. So we are very happy doing it because we like to help people. Uh, we also get a chance to do uh, the winter distribution, uh, distribution at the countryside to help the people who need it. Even though the temperature is uh, below the negative the 10 degree or sometimes the negative the 20 degrees Celsius, and the even the lower when it snow, we still uh, go over there to help the people. We had a happy time with the farmers at the countryside when we were doing the winter food distributing. We provide not only the food, but uh, we also treat them, uh, our family member in uh, every winter. So you can see from this the uh, news, the, the video, you can see the uh, not only uh, uh, local volunteer, there are some uh, uh, volunteer from Taiwan also uh, came to the Hebei province uh, uh, the winter time. It's very, it's very cold at that time. You see, you can see uh, we wear the, uh, not only wear the jacket, we wear the, the uh, coat <laughs> because the temperature is very low. Uh, we we also have a chance uh, to attend the mud cleaning for the community right after the storm in the 2023 in Beijing suburb. So after the big storm in Hebei province and Beijing uh, suburb in uh, 2023, just last year, so the mud cleaning in the community is a labor intensive job. Um, the weather was very hot and humid after the storm, but we still go there to help to clean up the mud left in the community. Uh, you can see Sister Janet was working hard, so she sweated it a lot. So mud cleaning in the community is a group effort 
it will take effort to clean it up, make the community a better place to live. That's something we always want to do. And we just uh, spend time there doing the labor and really love it. And uh, also prepare the distribution uh, of the daily use the material to the survivor after the storm. The extreme the weather condition caused the flood disaster is the same problem happening in the Houston, Texas. So the global warming effect caused uh, the extreme the weather condition is the happening at the different place in the world. Believe it or not, uh, this kind of the weather pattern will stay with us for a long time. I think it is because uh, the when the weather pattern change, it takes a long time to form to get to this stage. Just like starting from 19th century when the industry starts, people start burning coal to get energy. It's a long time to form this result. So once the weather pattern change, uh, it will stay there with us for a long time. Why is that? Because uh, unless we get less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the the behavior of the weather, just like that, it will happen again and again. So as uh, we are talking about flying PUSA, we are trying to do the work that we can do to help anywhere in the world. As long as we have a chance to do it, we're willing to do it without any hesitation. So, uh, thank you for thanks for listening. listening. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Victor and uh, Sister Janet. Um, I must say, you know, the, the beginning of your talk uh, was rather intriguing. And as I watch you abseiling uh, up in the air, um, I, I'm just wondering, um, obviously, I mean, you, you know, the work that you do in the, in the U.S., um, the disaster relief in Houston, for example, that Master Chen Yen has quite often mentioned uh, in the episodes that she's going through right now as an analogy of how we should cultivate. Um, and, and, and you started off uh, with uh, you up in the sky. And I know under now I understand what you mean by modern flying and all these satellites. I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, when you're up in the air, what were your inner thoughts? When you would, your, your, your life was being held only by straps, right? 2,000 meters high up. Your life was only helped by strength. What were your inner thoughts at that time? Or were you too engrossed with the scenery in front of you? Yeah, I think that that's a good question. I asked myself before I I, I attended what we call the paraflight. So, so usually I'm very conservative people like most other people. I would never try anything for fun with high risk. <laughs> but when you are in the environment, you uh, I just check air very carefully. I saw a lot of people flying in the sky. They may be uh, the tour tourists I met on the train. And they just go there and register, then they go up and fly and have fun, land it. So, so also my, my daughter encouraged me, said, it's, it's safe. We tried before. Go ahead. So, so it's a very important environment you're in. If you got some negative uh, people said, don't try it. It's very dangerous. And probably I give it a second thought. But in the environment, everything is, uh, you know, nice. And the, the weather is so good. I see people very happy doing that. I have never done it before. I think this is a chance in my life if I want to try it. So I have to make some good decision for myself and including Janet, she also agree we're doing things together, although we are on a different <laughs> different parachute. But uh it's I I think uh 
people want to experience something once i i i get into the air Had so many uh, yeah. uh that data that so yeah. many information and uh we um uh, we we need the courage from the love okay and we also need the trust right yeah yeah so we have to trust the word i heard and uh, see the environment i trust people they are doing that so so the feeling is different once i get up there uh, you say oh i'm i'm in the air along with the coach and that kind of uh, a little shock in in my mind but then, <laughs> <laughs> oh i i i made it if if you're in the air after i i made it so so suddenly uh, the view uh of life is changed. Believe me, after I took that, I have the, my heart feel totally different. I, I don't want to encourage everybody doing that if uh, people are afraid of that. That's normal. That's normal. The thing I did is, is abnormal to myself. So I, I, I go out one more step and give it a try. So I don't think yep. everybody wants to do that. <laughs> but from this story, we just want to share our experience. Uh, that's me. Uh, every time we want to learn something new or learn something is the challenge for you. You have the uh, very carefully to 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 check all the information and uh, try to uh, pay attention to listening uh, to learn. And you also have the very carefully to uh, uh to watch to you know not not only to, from the listening and to and also to watch also you have to adjust your emotion such as like Victor said just uh, uh your view okay so that's why I I share the coach the different coach said some different uh different way. Uh, uh, but every coach they say uh they use the happy tongue. That's me. He wanna uh you know encourage you that you have the confidence and you are uh happy to easy to do. So uh from this way I wanna share the the people. Every time when we wanna learn something new, you have to learn the new. You know you 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 couldn't always stay there. <laughs> you don't wanna you know. Yeah, so when you want to learn something new and that's that's very challenging you, you have the uh you have a uh, many way the way is uh you need to encourage yourself. You have a trust people. Okay. okay. Well, I I I was just wondering. I think, but if I were to land, my legs will be shivering. Uh, by the time you touch the ground, that that reminds me when I look at the straps. I'm the video you showed, and um, your life was just hanging on the straps. Um, I, I, you know, I, I can't help. While well, I see your life is there, and and prevent you from falling, and the, the straps remind me of upholding precepts. And Master say, you know, uh, when you uphold the precepts, you don't fall in the lower realm. Um, and obviously, in the process of which, and uh, the, the lesson I, I, and you mentioned when you first started, and when the winds come, they'll lift you up. Um, and, and that's what's happening in our life, is that we've got whirly winds that blow at us all the time. Um, and the question is, how to ride the wind? And that was a skill. And there's a skill, I think, that you've shown us um, that yeah, despite that we are in this world, uh, we face the afflictions on the whirly winds all the time. The question is, what can we learn from that to lift ourselves up uh, to the next uh, level, and um, and it's it's all about experiential learning, I guess, because you were guided um, by by the by the person who is an expert, of course. And like this, the saying, you need to trust, and this this like having faith, right? And we are riding, we are riding in this world, even guided by master. Um, we have faith in the teachings. And and obviously, and and but, but, but Victor, you mentioned that well, uh, we're going to learn something new. And you, I, I guess, before you fly, you must have learned what you will expect, so you get to understand that. And and that really reminds me, uh, what Master say: you need to have faith and understanding if we are to progress uh, in in this life, from living a body life to living a spiritual life. Um, and and it was a wonderful, uh, wonderful 
analogy. Uh, when we first started, I wasn't very sure where we are heading to. But when, when I was watching the video, I was trying to imagine myself hang, hanging there. And wow, okay, I'm being upheld by, by precepts in my life. I, I got a wind blowing. And then uh, yeah, that's what we are. You know, our life, we are facing all these worldly winds all the time. We don't know where the wind is coming from. But you need to have faith in the path, right? You've got to have the faith that you've got the next spot, that you've got to faith, have faith in master and the understanding uh, that we have in our life and how the wind can uplift us. And yet, at the end of the day, uh, about the victim, Sister Janet, uh, you landed safely. Uh, yeah, like I said, my, my legs will be shivering. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like your analogy and, and that analysis. That is, that is because we're well equipped with an experienced coach, like we're doing charity work in in, in Suji, we must go through the training first. Uh, we have to understand, uh, although we have never done like a high T's, uh, uh, you know, distribution. I heard their robbery, they have malaria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like uh, you know, all kinds of things can stop you right away. So, but we still try to overcome the that. Like we get some uh, uh, instruction, uh, say we have to take some uh, uh, some pills, uh, work for one week. So we we two weeks we got two pills. So we are well prepared. Even there is malaria in Haiti, we we feel comfortable. We are prepared. So that that's what we do suji all the time, right? Well, we we go to the disaster relief. We must be prepared before we go there, not just Absolutely. jump in there. Yes, yes, absolutely yes. right, absolutely right. Yes. Right, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, are there any questions that uh, anyone would like to ask uh, Brother Victor and uh, Sister Janet? Okay, if you're not for the question, I think it'd be great if we take a photo um, if uh, one of the sisters, uh, can you open up your videos and we uh, take a photo? Hey, Kaen. <laughs> Kaen, brother Chino for the great hosting and wow, awesome experience, <laughs> brother Victor and sister Janet. <laughs> Truly inspiring, uh, truly. Wow, very grateful. Uh, how Brachin link up everything together. Ah, what is about Pa? You know, brother, we can enjoy. Ah, what is about Pa? Yeah, yeah. Someone taking a photo. As, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, we are taking the photo. Can uh, more people on their video? Ah, uh? okay. No worry. Then we'll take whoever. Uh, picture here. Thank you everyone for listening and we are most grateful uh, to uh, Brother Victor and Sister Janet uh, for promoting this platform to uh, participants from other countries. Uh, do continue that. Uh, I think in future I will share the weekly uh, sharing with Sister so Sister can help us uh, to promote it. Well, really very inspiring session today. Most grateful. Okay, picture taken. Got it. Most grateful. Okay. And Turn most <laughs> Oh, it was amazing. And wonderful. Bringing us uh, journey. Yeah. Brother Chin always connecting the Dharma for us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. sorry. The, the recording of Brother Victor song, uh, please send it over. Uh. We wish to listen to the one that is moved. Actually, we <laughs> wish to sing next time. We wish to sing along. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sing along. <laughs> Bye bye. Bye bye. So, um, uh, Brother Victor, Sister Janet, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. Great learning from this. Um, so, that's all the time we have for today. Um, so, before we end, we shall now offer three vows um, to, to the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha. First vow. Second bow. Third bow. We we'll also offer a bow to our board uh, masters. 
Okay, it's coming so much, um, everybody, and uh, we will see you again next week. And have a nice weekend. Thank you. Yeah, thank everyone. You. Thank 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 you.